Hello everybody, my name is Chantal and welcome back to my channel for those that have been here before and welcome to those that are new. Today is my first ever book review video and I am an avid reader, I love reading so I thought today it would be quite appropriate if I talk about some, specifically um, some of the popular science books that I've read because I feel as scientists, popular science books are one of the best ways where you can satisfy your curiosity about fields that may not necessarily be related to what you're working on but are still scientific in nature, so are still very interesting but are still highly entertaining. So today I'm going to talk about three books, popular science books that I highly recommend and one that I don't really recommend. So the first two books I'm going to talk about were prescribed reading in my honors course and they were pretty much the first taste I had of popular science books which might be why they're some of my favorites but I really enjoyed both of these books and the first one I'm going to talk about is Bad Science by Ben Goldacre. So this book is probably one of my favorite books of all times not just in popular science but in any kind of genre and the author Ben Goldacre is probably what you would call a warrior for science. So in his book he he first starts off with sort of fields that may not necessarily have far-reaching consequences um, for example things like homeopathy and detoxification etc and these are things that say are based in scientific findings but really um, the the, these fields have no solid scientific facts to back up what they're saying and he then moves on to bigger fish and he takes on big pharmaceutical companies who distort the data to make their drugs look better than their competitors drugs and this is real life consequences because people will then take the drugs that seem better but they may not necessarily be so because the companies have distorted the data um, so this is really, really an important book, not only for medicinal science, but for any kind of science, because it really gets you to think critically and to not take things on face value. And he also speaks a lot about the media and how the media portrays science. You know, one day you'll read an article that says coffee causes cancer, and the next day you'll read an article that says coffee prevents cancer. And this is not the shortcomings of science, but rather it's the shortcomings of media and how media portrays science. And this is not necessarily media's fault because the people who report on scientific findings have not had training in scientific principles and methods etc but regardless the way that media portrays science needs to change because it sort of undermines the scientific principle in the public's eyes and this is really really not a good thing because people need to rely on science because this is the best way we have to find the truth um, so yeah, he talks a lot about that and as I said, it, this book really gets you to think critically and it also gives you the tools to think critically, which is probably my favorite part of this book. Um, and he talks about how data can be distorted and how things can change depending on how you report it, etc. So he gives you the tools in which to read something and think, hang on, is what they're saying really, really true? which I absolutely love and I highly recommend this book to anybody and everybody, not just scientists, not just medical students, but it really helps everybody to think about what the information that they're taking in and to find that nugget of truth that may be behind all the BS. So the second book that I had to read in my honors year was more specifically for marine biology students, but it can reach a wider audience. And this book is The Unnatural History of the Sea. And again, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this book because it was written so well and it was written in such an engaging way even though it's kind of history um, and there's a lot of facts in it but it was really really interesting and it's basically about um, how the fishing industry started and how we've got to where we are today and basically how we are destroying the oceans and how we have overfished many stocks etc but this book is not only all doom and gloom there is a nugget of hope at the end and he really speaks about how we may be able to change our behavior so that we can save um, the fish in the ocean which is again why I really really enjoyed this book and as I said it was so well written and it was so engaging and it was just a really nice overview summary of the history of the fishing industry and I really recommend this to any marine biology student or anybody who enjoys eating fish. It's really informative on where you get your fish from, why it might not be good to eat the fish or why it might be good to eat the fish. Um, it's just a really good way to educate yourself on the fish that we get out of the sea. 
So my third and final recommendation is this beauty and it is The Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson and this is probably one of the most popular popular science books and I feel like if you Google or if you YouTube reviews on popular science books this will be one that pops up the most often because it's it's very popular and there's a very good reason for that it's a really 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 good book and it covers so many fields from physics to geology to biology and evolution even a little bit of social sciences this book covers everything and it really is a short history of nearly everything and it it doesn't necessarily go in chronological order from the big bang to where we are today but it's it's such a beautiful story format so it is very factually dense there are a lot of facts in this book and i feel like even if you read it 10 times, there'll still be something new to learn from this book. But it doesn't make it difficult to read. It doesn't feel like you're just reading a whole bunch of facts because not only does he talk about the discoveries, but he talks about the scientists who made the discoveries and the stories behind these discoveries, which I feel really brings science to life and it really brings this book to life, which is why I thoroughly enjoyed it. And even though he covers so much stuff, I mean, it's a little bit thick, but it's really, it's not that long and it goes by so quickly just because it's such a highly enjoyable and engaging read. And to anybody who's interested in any kind of science, I highly highly recommend this book so the final book I'm going to talk about is one that I don't really recommend and this is the greatest show on earth by Richard Dawkins and I apologize if there are any Richard Dawkins fans out there but I am not one of them I am NOT a fan of getting your opinion shoved down my throat even though I agree with your opinion I just really don't like the way he argues and debates and bring across brings across his opinion but this book I was so so excited to read this book I've been wanting to read this book for ages because it's basically all of the ev evidence we have for evolution so how do we know that evolution is true and even though I had already pretty much studied all of this stuff one of my majors in my undergrad was ecology and evolution so I pretty much knew everything that he was talking about in the book but sometimes it's still really nice to read popular science books about the things that you know because it brings it across in a story format and it it for me it helps me to understand it better but then also it helps me to communicate it better to the people around me because you're always gonna have somebody who doesn't believe in evolution and you have to try and talk to them about it and maybe not convince them but just bring across a better understanding of evolution and why it is actually true I mean obviously evolution is true but anyway let's not talk about that so this book I was so looking forward to it but I was so disappointed and I actually I couldn't even finish the book because you know Richard Dawkins is a very aggressive man and he comes across as very arrogant and it really comes across in his writing style and he just as I said he just he writes very arrogantly and he repeats himself a lot and it's kind of feels like he thinks he's speaking to dumb people so he must repeat himself over and over and over again and this just really really frustrated me and he just comes across as very arrogant and Again, this is not the way you're going to reach the people who don't believe you. You know, in my case, you're preaching to the choir, dude. I really agree with everything you're saying, but I still don't like the way you're saying it. And even if you don't believe in evolution, there's no way he's going to change your mind in the way he brings across his argument. So, I don't know. If you want to learn about evolution, I think there's plenty of other books, better books out there that would do the job. And I just, I really, unfortunately, I cannot recommend this book. So let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of the books that I've suggested, what your thoughts are on the books. Um, please let me know if you enjoyed the video. The usual, like my video if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I hope you all have a happy day.